The Dark Knight, the second in a trilogy directed by Christopher Nolan, is widely considered the best superhero film ever made, with a fourth place rank on IMDb out of all films. It is masterfully written and acted, and is brilliantly shot. Stranger. The interrogation scene in The Dark Knight contains one of the best performances in the film. Heath Ledger plays the Joker in a way which constantly keeps the viewer captivated and mixes with dramatic lighting to reflect the scene's plot points. In the sequence, Heath Ledger uses tics, such as licking his lips and flickering his eyes around the scene. His movements are manic, but not over the top. This causes the audience to see the Joker as unhinged, but in control. By constantly moving his eyes around the scene, he shows the viewers how manipulating the character is. While he says he has no plan, he is constantly manipulating the world around him. Ledger portrays this in a perfectly subtle way. At the beginning of the scene, the Joker is restrained and somewhat relaxed. But once Batman begins to interrogate him, he becomes more and more unhinged to reflect Batman's increasing anger and strength. It gives power to his performance when he starts laughing and becoming manic. Their energies remain paralleled throughout the scene, as both are outcasts, but one stands for order and the other stands for total anarchy, an unmovable force versus an unstoppable object. This induces an escalating sense of anxiety in the audience because there seems to be no easy way out of the situation. The other elements in the scene antagonize this rising anxiety. The camera movement becomes handheld and shaky and moves around quickly. This makes it harder for the viewers to realize what is happening and makes them more sympathetic to Batman's anger. The film score reflects this as well. After the Joker says, You're gonna have to play my little game if you want to save one of them. The music goes into a slow crescendo. This induces anxiety in the audience and reflects the increasing tension between the two powerful characters. Can't feel the next See? The scene uses many subtle lighting cues to progress the plot lit with harsh, unnatural, practical lighting. The first part of the scene is lit with a dim lamp as practical light, and is shot in front of a dark background so all you can see is the Joker's face, standing out from the pitch black with his white face paint. All the viewer can see is Heath Ledger's performance, allowing them to see every little facial movement and detail. Isolating the viewer of the Joker forces them to listen to him from a pure lens, by removing distraction from the other cinematic elements. It also forces them to see Commissioner Gordon's point of view, allowing the viewer to sympathise with him. Even though they are lit by the same light source, the Joker's face and hands are fully illuminated, but Commissioner Gordon's face is only half lit. Illuminating the Joker's face shows that his knowledge of the hostage's whereabouts gives him intellectual power over the Commissioner. But the Commissioner's face is only half lit because he is in the dark about where Harvey Dent and Rachel are. This hints to the viewer the power dynamics going on in the scene. The only other source of light in the scene is a fluorescent light above the door behind Commissioner Gordon, foreshadowing to the viewer that he can, and will, leave the situation. I'm gonna need a cup of coffee. The Joker, however, is trapped by the darkness, which hides his real interrogator, Batman. The second part of the scene is suddenly lit in bright fluorescent lighting. It has an unnatural tint to it and eliminates all shadows from the room. Because Batman relies on the darkness to conceal himself, it puts the character in a difficult situation we can't use trickery to overpower his enemy. This makes the viewer uncomfortable as it's a sudden change for the darkness they had come to expect from the dark settings of the Joker and Batman's usual confrontations. This uncomfortableness is aggravated by the non-diegetic sound. For example, when the fluorescent lighting is turned on, a high-pitched ringing sound can be heard. This makes the shot intentionally confusing and adds to the intensity of the lighting, reflecting the flooding of senses the Joker would have experienced. After his head has smashed the table, the audience hears a low thumping sound, reminiscent of blood pumping to the head, which slowly fades. This makes the pain more palpable and visceral for the audience, as it reflects the sensation of intense pain dissipating. Never start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. Nolan meticulously controls the character's placement in the scene, and the way the camera moves around the scene to reflect and enhance the plot. At the start of the Joker and Batman's conversation, the Batman is shown on the left of the screen looking into the right, while the Joker is shown on the right looking into the left. This makes the Joker the antagonizing force in the scene, and the Batman the progressive force. Here I am. Because we le read left to right, screen direction typically uses placing on the right to indicate progression and morality, while placing on the left indicates antagonization and conservatism. 
but as the Joker talks, the camera begins to move around the characters, pushing Batman into the right of the shot. This confuses the audience as the lines between the right and wrong become blurred, causing them to wonder whether the Joker is correct and whether he will overpower Batman psychologically. You will complete me. The lighting of the characters reflects this. Batman's eyes appear almost purely black and empty, with just a pinprick of light reflected in them. The Joker's eyes are much more emotive and clearer to see, meaning that the Joker isn't demonized and his point is allowed to be considered by the audience, blurring the lines between protagonist and antagonist. This breaking down of the typical cues to indicate her of his villain is one of the aspects which makes The Dark Knight such a groundbreaking superhero film.